continuing our series, uh, Let's Say Grace, and, and what that means in looking at the book of uh, Galatians and Paul's writings there. And so we'll be in Galatians chapter 5, um, and uh, I encourage you to go back. We've looked on Sunday mornings at Galatians um, 1, 2, and then last week we looked at 3. Uh, I encourage you to don't miss reading Galatians chapter 4. Uh, it is a great book. I mean, it's a great chapter in a great book. And so I just encourage you to read that. If you're following in your journal, uh, you will take the daily readings and you will actually go through Galatians chapter 4. But this morning, uh, we're going to focus on Galatians chapter 5 because I think it is something that is vital for us as followers of Jesus Christ. And it is necessary in each one of our lives and in the church today. And so we're just going to dive right in this morning. Um, I read an illustration that I, that I want to start this morning with, and so I'm just going to dive right in. Uh, th- there was a captain who was flying a plane, and his voice, uh, as soon as they took off and they got up to where they had leveled out uh, in their altitude, and they were just cruising right along, and had been up there for a little bit of time, and the captain's voice came on um, the, the um, speaker, and this is what the captain said, uh, there's no cause for alarm. And when the captain says there's no cause for alarm, there may be cause for alarm. But the captain says there's no cause for alarm. But we felt that you as passengers need to know that for the last couple of hours that we've been cruising up here, uh, we've been flying without the benefit of our radio. We've not had a compass. Our radar and our navigational beacon has uh, quit working due to the breakdown of some of the components. And so this means that we are, in the broad sense of the word, lost and are not sure the direction that we're heading right now. But there's no cause for alarm. You'll be glad to know, however, that on the brighter side of the picture, we are making excellent time wherever it is that we are going. (laughs) There's no cause for alarm. I think what Paul is telling us is exactly what this captain is saying to those that are flying on his plane that there are a lot of people in the church, and Paul was writing to the, to the Galatian church, there are a lot of people in the church that are making really good time in life, but they just don't know where it is that they're going. Some of us, if we would be honest with ourselves, have actually felt that way in our journey, in, in our life as a follower of Jesus Christ. We're making really good time. We're getting along really, really good. We just don't know the destination of where it is that we are going. And Paul is addressing this issue, and he is saying, listen, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, there is a way for you to overcome this feeling that you are just journeying through life, and you're making really, really good time, and you don't know where it is that God is leading you. God has gotten past, the, uh, Paul has gotten past in addressing the issue of trying to live life by the law and getting past the law and living under the umbrella of grace. He said the law is really what is going to lead you in that path of not knowing where it is that you're going, but you're making really, really good time. But under the umbrella of grace that Paul is calling us to, there is a freedom that he addresses here in chapter 5 that sets us free from the law and gives us the liberty in operating under the Spirit that we need to be free from the chains of this earth just in the way that we sang the song this morning. God desires to set you free from the chains of life itself. And the chains that Paul is addressing here are the chains that, just like the Galatian church, that we need to be set free from today right here in 2019. Paul says the power that we need and the freedom that we get in Christ only comes when we live a life filled with the Holy Spirit. And I want you to catch that. The power that we need only comes, as followers of Christ, only comes as we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And so I want to begin by asking you a question this morning. Is there a difference, and we need to consider this, is there a difference in the person who has the Holy Spirit and the person who doesn't? Is there a difference in somebody that has the Holy Spirit in their life and somebody that does not have the Holy Spirit in their life? 
So let's take a look at what Paul is writing here in the book of Galatians. Paul dives into this, and Paul really addresses this. He begins in chapter 5 talking about the freedom that comes in Christ. But we're going to begin reading at verse 13 and then go through the end of the chapter. In verse 13, Paul says, You, my brothers, and we could say here brothers and sisters because Paul is writing to the entire church. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free But do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on believing and and, uh, on, uh, uh, if you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Verse 16. So I say, live by the Spirit. There's another translation that I, that I like a lot better. It says, walk by the Spirit. And that, that's the direction that we're going to go um, this morning. Walk by the Spirit or walk in the Spirit. And you will not gratify the s- desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other. So that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. So here's what Paul is saying. There is a huge difference in somebody that has the Holy Spirit with them and and fills them and somebody that doesn't. And we need, as, as, as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to know the difference. And we need to know what life is like without the Holy Spirit. And we need to know what it means to live by the Spirit or to walk with the Holy Spirit in our life. Because Paul said, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in your life and you go back to the law and you go back to trying to, be, to, to earn your relationship with Jesus Christ, then you are going to live in the sinful natures of your flesh. But if you have the Holy Spirit, that's when life has great and new meaning. And it is a better life in the freedom of the Holy Spirit. He goes on in verse 19. Let me go back and read 18 just to lead into 19. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And I want to pause there before we... Well, I'll read that last part and then I'll say this. Against such things, there is no law. Let's pause there. Notice that Paul says the fruit. He doesn't say the fruits. So sometimes we twist uh, what, what Paul is saying and we say that there are nine fruits of the Spirit. Paul didn't say that there are all kinds of different fruits of the Spirit. Meaning that sometimes we have uh, joy and sometimes we have peace. Sometimes we have patience. Sometimes we have gentleness. No, Paul said the fruit of the Spirit. Meaning that you either have fruit or you don't have fruit. And Paul says in verse 23, this is the fruit of the Spirit. And he goes on to name each one of those fruits. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and, and, and so on. He says, this is the fruit. This is how you know that you are walking or living by the Spirit. When this fruit is evident in your life. And then verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Paul is clearly distinguishing here that life by the Holy Spirit, living with the Holy Spirit, walking with the Holy Spirit, is a life that is different than if you do not have the Holy Spirit. And listen, follower of Jesus Christ, when you entered into relationship with Jesus Christ, your journey as a follower of Christ did not stop there. You have to go the next step and invite the Holy Spirit in to guide you and direct you. Paul is clearly addressing 
followers of Jesus in this, in this letter that he has written to the, to, the, to the Galatian church. He is saying, you started out as a follower of Jesus Christ. You started out living under grace. But then you didn't go the next step. He, he addresses it clearly here in verse five, or chapter 5. You didn't go the next step in your relationship with Christ. You stopped with grace and you didn't keep going and invite the Holy Spirit into your life. What Paul is saying in chapter 5 is there is clearly a difference in somebody that has the Holy Spirit in their life and somebody that does not have the Holy Spirit in their life. Paul says, if you enter into a relationship with Christ and you are a follower of Christ and you don't invite the Holy Spirit in, then what happens is you are eventually going to get back to the point to where you are living life guided by the flesh. And then you will get to the place to where you walk away and surrender that relationship with Christ. You give it back to Him because you say, I'm more excited about the flesh than I am about the Holy Spirit coming in and guiding and directing me. You see, there are two steps in a journey with Christ. One is to receive His grace. The next is to receive His Holy Spirit. That's what Paul is saying here to the Galatian church. You made a mistake. When you only received the grace, you did not receive the fullness of what God had for you. Take the next step and live life or walk by the Holy Spirit. We can't stop moving in our journey with Christ as a follower of Christ with just receiving His grace. You see, what happens is a lot of us think, I need, I need fire insurance. I need insurance that I'm not going to go to hell. And so I'm going to enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, and that's, that's as far as I'm going to go. Because I just don't want to go. I'm, I'm scared of hell just enough that I don't want to go there. And so I'm going to do only what I have to do in order to keep myself out of hell. And so we think I'm going to have a grace relationship with Christ. And then what happens is if that's as far as you go, you forget life lived in the Holy Spirit or life walking with the Holy Spirit. And then before you know it, you're right back to living these things that Paul talked about here in verse 18 or in verse 19, 20, and 21. Living, craving the desires of the flesh. The only way, and I want you to listen to this, the only way that you overcome the flesh is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Adam and Eve couldn't do it in the Garden of Eden. And Adam and Eve walked with God. They heard the voice of God. And if God's first creation couldn't overcome the flesh, then we can't overcome the flesh. And that's why Jesus came to die on the cross to pay the sin payment that we owed so that we could become followers of Jesus Christ and then to leave. He said, I have to leave so that the Holy Spirit comes so that you then become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Paul says there's two steps in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Receive his grace and then receive the Holy Spirit. You can't stop halfway through being a follower of Jesus Christ. You have to go the next step. And you have to rely on the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean if, if this is what Paul is telling the Galatian church? And Paul doesn't just uh, address this with the Galatian church. It's all through Paul's writings. It, it's, it's all through Paul's writings. You can, you can read any of, his, um, any of his letters or any of his um, theology books, if you will, and you can see that Paul is calling us further and deeper into a journey with Jesus Christ. And the way that we do that, Paul says, is through the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean to walk in the Holy Spirit? Or what does it mean to live in the Holy Spirit? Well, this, is, this is what I think it means. And so this is, this is what I glean from Paul's writings, not just here in the book of Galatians, but all of Paul's writings in totality. Walking in the Spirit means to be believers, not just in what we say, but in how we behave. That's what Paul is saying here in the middle, at the end of, of Galatians chapter 5. You can't just say, I'm a Christian. You can't just say, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ and not act like a follower of Jesus Christ. So how do we do that? It's the very, very beginning here. It means our whole life is surrendered to God. Our whole life, 100%, is surrendered to God. So let me ask you a question. Are you committed to Jesus Christ? Or are you surrendered to Jesus Christ? 
Because there's a difference. There's a huge difference. Are you committed to Jesus Christ? Or are you surrendered to Jesus Christ? Because we make a lot of commitments in our life. We commit to lose weight. How's that going for you? (laughs) We commit to go to the gym. How does that work? We make a whole lot of commitments in our life. And we carry it further and we say, I'm committing to Jesus Christ. Listen, Jesus doesn't want you to commit to him. Listen, Jesus doesn't want you to commit to him. He wants you to surrender to him. Because there's a huge difference in what you're committing to and what you're surrendering to. We make a whole lot of commitments in our life that get broken. But when you surrender to something, it means totally different than committing to something. Here's the best example that I can give you. I love to watch MASH. I love to watch MASH. Um, I could watch MASH all day long. Um, Much to my wife's chagrin. I could watch MASH every single episode. Some of you are looking at me like, what in the world is MASH? I'm sorry, I'm an old soul, and I like to go back and watch the old shows. I don't like the MASH movie. So when I talk about MASH, the movie was horrible. The TV series was excellent. So I was watching MASH a couple of weeks ago, and Hawkeye and BJ were traveling in a Jeep. And, as, and if you don't know them, that, do, that doesn't matter. You will still get the gist of what, the, what I'm saying here. Hawkeye and BJ were traveling in a Jeep, and they were going through some of the Korean country. And as they were traveling in the Jeep, uh, they took fire from some of the North Koreans. And they pulled the Jeep over. It kind of crashed, and they, they pulled over. And they got out, and Hawk, Hawkeye, of course, is anti-gun. He doesn't want to shoot back uh, at any of the North Korean soldiers. And so here they are, and eventually the North Korean soldiers come up, and they take Hawkeye and BJ captive. Now listen, Hawkeye and BJ did not commit to these North Korean soldiers. They surrendered to these North Korean soldiers. What they said is, we give up. We are not going to do what we want to do anymore, travel in the Jeep. We are going to do what you want us to do so you don't kill us. And there's a difference in committing to these North Korean soldiers and surrendering to these North Korean soldiers. In the same way, there is a difference in committing to Jesus Christ and surrendering to Jesus Christ. Living and walking by the Spirit simply means that your whole life is surrendered, not committed, surrendered to God. And the way that you get past just living in a grace relationship with God is to surrender to God. And that's where a lot of us say, I didn't sign up for that. I didn't sign up for surrender because I like to do some of the things that I like to do, whatever those things are. And I want to keep having those things or keep pursuing the things that I like in life while trying to have a committed relationship to God. Paul says, keep on trying that and see how it works out for you. Some of us think that's what we're going to do. Commit to God. We're going to journey. Things are going to be fabulous. And then what happens is we wind ourselves worse off than the way we were before we committed to God. And then we get mad at God and we say, God, you messed me up. I committed to you. And all the while he is saying to us, I didn't want you to commit. I wanted you to surrender. Living a life Walking in the Spirit or living by the Spirit simply means that your whole life is surrendered to God. So when we walk by the Spirit, the first thing that we have to see in this, and, what, and, and the reason I like walking by the Spirit is because here at the end, Paul talks about um, keeping in step with the Spirit in verse 20 and 25. And so if you're keeping in step, I, I, I um, was in band in high school, and I remember what it was like to keep in step. You had to, you had your left, everybody in band, the left foot had to move at the same time, the right foot had to move at the same time. And so I'm imaging in my mind when I'm reading what Paul is saying here, more than just living by the Spirit, but walking by the Spirit, journeying, journeying with the Spirit. And so when we think of what it means to walk by the Spirit or live by the Spirit, what Paul is is showing us here in the imagery of his words is he is saying there has to be movement in your relationship with God. There has to be movement in your relationship with the Holy Spirit. But what happens is a lot of us come to Jesus Christ and we pull out that that old hymn that says, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. (laughs) And we're singing that thinking, I'm not moving. (laughs) I'm not moving. I'm staying right here. You see, that's a commitment to God. 
When you say, I'm staying here and I'm not moving, you're committed to God and you're not surrendered to God. And what Jesus is waiting for us to sing is, I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender everything to the Lord. Walking by the Spirit means that we are in step with the Spirit. And when the Spirit picks up his left foot, we pick up our left foot. When the Spirit picks up his right foot, we pick up our right foot. And only when the Spirit leads us to do those certain things. It means not being content with where you're at now in your relationship with God, but you are willing to journey and following the Holy Spirit wherever he leads you. When I was growing up in high school, um, I was a part of the Missouri State Youth Choir for, for a few years. And when you get, there was, I think, about 40 of us or something like that in the Missouri State Youth Choir. And when you get all of those teenagers together, Lord help the leaders that led us through all of that. Um, we, we spent three weeks together and we went to different churches every night and we sang at a different church and we put on a presentation every single night throughout the state of Missouri. Well, one of the things that always happened is somebody would complain about the food because the church has fed us. And when you're at a church and you just eat whatever there is, you don't get to put in an order. Whatever's there is whatever you eat. Somebody would always complain about the food. And our, um, our leader, his name was Johnny Cresong, uh, he was a pastor. He always said when we would get to a church, these words, where he leads me, I will follow. What he feeds me, I will swallow. <laughs> And as I was working on this message, it hit me. I think that's what it means to be led by the Spirit. I, I, I really believe, I think that's what it means to be led by the Spirit. Where he leads me, I will follow. And what he feeds me, I will swallow. I'm not going to complain about it. I'm not going to be upset by it. I'm going to move as the Spirit moves. I'm going to do whatever the Spirit says do. And if he doesn't move, I'm not going to move. If he goes left, I'm going to go left. If he goes right, I'm going to go right. But let me tell you, I'm going to do whatever it is the Spirit asks me to do. But some of us, some of us surrender into a grace relationship with God. And we forget that living by the Spirit means that we are operating through the power of the Holy Spirit, led by God alone. When you enter into this life that Paul is telling us about here in Galatians chapter 5, and you are led by the Spirit or you are walking by the Spirit, you can't do what you have always done in life. Because God calls you out of that into a life that is filled and fueled by the, by the Holy Spirit. You can't walk with the Spirit and stay in the same place. You have to be moving. Another thing about walking with the Spirit or living life by the Spirit, sometimes it's hard to start and keep going. Sometimes it's hard to start walking by the Spirit or living by the Spirit and keep going. Well, why is that? When you start exercising, your body doesn't like it. Your body will remind you by the aches and pains that you have sometimes that it does not like exercise. And you then think, oh, it was hard to start and it's even harder to keep going. Why? Because you're committed. You haven't surrendered. And it's the same way in the spiritual realm. When you start walking by the Spirit... It's hard to keep walking by the Spirit because just like an exercise when the body says, I don't like that, the enemy says, I don't like it when you're walking by the Spirit. And listen, this is where it gets hard as a follower of Jesus Christ. It is not easy. I don't know who told us the lie that walking with Jesus is easy because it's not easy. Being committed is easy. But surrendering is hard because the enemy says, when you start walking by the Spirit... I'm going to make it even harder for you to keep walking by the Spirit. And you see, if you're just committed, you're going to give up. And you're going to go right back to square one. It's like when you're playing the game sorry. You go right back to where you started from, and all of your progress, it's been erased. You see, that's the difference in being committed and being surrendered. So I ask you this morning, are you committed? Are you committed to walking with the Spirit? Or have you surrendered to walking with the Spirit? 
Are you all in no matter what, no matter what the cost is, no matter what the price that you have to pay is, no matter if you have to walk away from everything? Are you surrendered to walking in the Spirit? Are you committed? And then when it gets hard, and when it comes to you having to pay the price, and the aches and pains come, you say, I I, I didn't sign up for that. God, I didn't sign up for that. And and, and, and so I just need to take a break, and I'm not going to walk. I'm just going to go back right to where I was. Well, Paul is writing to a church that did exactly that. And Paul is telling them, listen, where you are at is not where you began. He begins chapter 5 by saying that. Where you once were, you've erased all of that progress. And you've gone back to step one. And I'm calling you back to living a life, walking with the Spirit, living by the Spirit, wholly surrendered to this relationship that you have with God. It's hard to stop. I'm mean, sorry, it's hard to start, and it is equally or harder to keep going in this journey. But Paul says the rewards of this are totally, totally far, far better than being committed to God than compared to being surrendered to God. As we walk in the Spirit, what Paul is saying here by the fruit of the Spirit uh, that he has written here in verse, in verse 22, what Paul is telling us is that as we walk with the Spirit and we continually do the things that please him, we avoid more and more things that will wind up hurting us in the long run. You see, when we don't commit, I'm, I'm sorry, when we don't surrender to God and we're just committed, what happens when we see a better offer come along, that's the direction that we go. And we say, "Mm, I'll just pass on this situation with God today. I'm just a little committed, and so I'm going to go over here because I've got a better offer. And what Paul is reminding us is that decision that we make in the long run, it's going to wind up hurting us more than staying surrendered to God Almighty. So whenever we commit, we fail. Whenever we surrender, it means so much more. In relationship with God. So we have to ask ourselves the question. How is it that we can put into practice. What Paul is telling us here. By living or walking in the spirit. How is it today in 2019. That we can walk by the spirit. That we can live in the spirit. Every single day. The one thing that I'll tell you to do. Above all things. Above all things. If you will simply listen to God. Simply listen to God and be obedient. You will live a life walking or living in the Spirit. That's it. Listening to God. So then we have to ask ourselves, how is it that we listen to God? How is it that we can hear the Holy Spirit? When I was growing up, we had a... um, A pastor's wife who would always lead us in in Christmas musicals every year. And so that Sunday night before Christmas, we would always do a Christmas musical. And and, and I guess that we were kids that didn't like to listen. I I, I can't imagine that. Um, But we didn't like to listen. And so the one thing that she would do that I always remember, and and I've shared this with you before, she would make us take our hands and cup them behind our ears so that we would then listen. Because there was something about putting your hands behind your ears that it mysteriously made your mouth be closed. And so what we have to do is to take our spiritual hands and put them behind our spiritual ears so that we can hear what it is the Holy Spirit is saying to us. So how do we do that? Well, first is stop being committed and start surrendering. Stop with the commitment and move past that to living a life wholly surrendered to God. And what that means is when you start saying, God, whatever it is, whatever the price, whatever the cost, no matter what, that's what I'm in for. You see, you're past the commitment and you're to a life of surrender. In the same way that BJ and Hawkeye said, I give up. I'm not going to do what I want to do anymore. We are surrendering to you. We are giving up our own will, our own right to make decisions, and we are giving that to you. God is waiting for you to surrender to him. 
You surrendered to him whenever you entered into a grace relationship with him. So keep that act of surrender and live or move in the spirit by being surrendered to God. The next thing is you will discover that you will never be surrendered to God wholly unless you are in his word. A lot of us are begging God, God, I need you to speak to me. I need you to speak to me. I need you to speak to me. And he has. It's here. He's waiting for you to pick this up and dive into his word. Because if you want to know about God, he's revealed himself to us. He has preserved his word. He has allowed his word to be preserved in these 66 books for us to dive into and to to eat spiritually so that we can live a life surrendered, walking in the spirit or living in the spirit. You have to surrender to God and you have to get into his word because you won't hear him unless you are in the Bible and what it is that he is saying to us. The next thing that I think that we have to do is we have to commit to worshiping him and spending some time fasting. Worshiping him and spending some time fasting. Because every place that we look at in the New Testament, after Jesus left and the Holy Spirit came, whenever they wanted a powerful move of the Holy Spirit, there were two things that happened. They were worshiping and they were fasting. In Acts chapter 13, verse 2, in the very first part of that verse, it says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, then what happened? The Holy Spirit said. So what was the prerequisite for the Holy Spirit speaking? The worshiping and fasting. Worshiping and fasting. You have to spend time worshiping God and fasting, giving up something. Fasting is is simply giving up something. It doesn't always have to be food. It can be giving up something. And so what I encourage you to do is whatever it is in your life, after you've committed to worshiping and after you've said, I'm going to fast, whatever it is in your life that is causing you to be committed instead of surrendering, fast from that. Fast from that. If it is the television, fast from the television. If it's your phone, oh, (laughs) fast from that. So let me ask you a question. When you get up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? Do you reach for your phone or do you reach for God? Oh, now we're in trouble. Do you grab your phone and dive into the Bible app first, his word? Or do you check your email, you check your Facebook, you check your... What, what, What do you do first? Because I think that that's the difference in being committed and surrendering. I really do. That's the difference in being committed and surrendering. You have to commit. You have to commit to worshiping and fasting. And whatever it is that's keeping you from being surrendered and you're only committed, fast from that. Fast from that. The last thing that I think that we have to do is we have to get rid of the noise in our life. And some of the things that I'm asking you to fast from are the very things that bring a lot of noise into our life. And that noise that we have in our life draws us out of surrender into a life of commitment. Because whenever we have all of this noise and all of this distraction in our life, it keeps us from listening to the Lord. And so here is, here's what I, what I want to share with you this morning. Let's pretend that this is God speaking that this is, this is how God speaks in our life. Here's how we treat our relationship with God. And, and, and we forget to listen. We go to God and we say, God, listen, I've got all of this stuff. Here. I've got this problem. And I just want to ask you to take care of those things for me. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. I'll, I'll, I'll be back a little bit later. And then we go on about our life. And God wants to speak to us about those things. He doesn't want us to just pour out everything to him and then journey off and go do our own thing. That's a life of commitment and not a life of surrender. God wants us to pour out our heart to him and then sit there and worship, fasting from the things that distract us, clearing our life from, the, from all of the junk that keeps us from hearing what it is that he is saying, and then listening, listening to him. And then as we pour out these things to God, we hear what it is that he is actually saying to us, listening to God, giving him time to speak to us, That's what it means to walk in the Spirit. That's what it means to live in the Spirit. And that is simply what it means to live a life surrendered to God. So how is it that you spend time with God? 
Do you run to God and you pour everything out and you say, okay, thanks, I'll be back a little bit later. And in the meantime, God's saying, wait, wait, I I, want to talk to you about those things. I want to spend time with you about those things. I want you to worship me. I want you to clear yourself from all of the distraction so you can hear what it is that I want to say to you. So what I'm asking you to do this week is to begin a life of surrender to God. Totally surrender to Him. Diving into His Word to see what it is that He wants to speak to us through the Holy Scriptures. Worshiping Him and fasting and then listening to whatever it is that He wants to say to you. I want to close this morning with a video. And so I want you to just spend a couple of minutes this morning watching this. Drew, I've just been feeling so blah lately, you know? I mean, I'm just thinking about the Bible and how it talks about how God was the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if that's true, then why can't I hear him speaking? I'm sorry, I'll talk louder next time. What? Well, I mean, I wasn't saying anything, but I mean, I can talk louder if that'll help you. What are you talking about? Well, I wasn't talking then, but you couldn't hear me, so I'll I'll talk louder. No, I'm talking about God. Why can't I hear God speak? Are you even listening to me? Yeah, I'm totally tracking with you. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, if that's true, then maybe you can tell me. Like, what is the problem? I mean, why can't I hear him like he was talking back in the day? Well, you can. I mean, that's what the Bible's for, right? Well, yeah. I mean, the Bible is awesome. But I just feel like I'm missing something. Like, it should be deeper or something personal, you know? I don't know. I mean, I've never heard him, but let me look it up. Look it up? Just take a second. No, you don't just look it up. I mean, that doesn't even make any... Don't distract me, please. What? Don't distract me, please. Distract you? Yeah, I can't thumb type and you talking. Hey, pizza's on sale. That makes total sense. I know, because it's a weekend. No, no, what you said about distracting. Hmm? I did? Yes, maybe that's what the problem is. Okay. I mean, we never, ever, ever just stop and listen. Well... No, you can't just stop. I mean, you've got to keep on living, right? And well, that's the whole point of life yeah, is to live. Yeah, I mean, live. you have to live. But I'm just saying, like, how do we expect to hear the Lord speaking unless we actually give him time to speak, right? <laughs> give him time. Yes. Well, let me think. I don't have any time. I might be able to pencil him in next week, Thursday no, no, or something. No, 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 but... no. Let's just try right now, okay? Huh? Let's just stop what we're doing and let's just listen and wait for him to speak. Okay. Okay. Okay, that was great. I gotta go do laundry. No, 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 no. You can't just do it in two seconds, okay? Well, that was time, No, right? no, no, okay, like, look, just sit down, okay? okay? And All we right. are just gonna stop and give time to God and let him speak, okay? Okay. Okay. What are you doing? Waiting for God to speak. No, you're playing on your phone. No, I'm multitasking. It's fine. Oh, okay. Can I see that? What? Oh, that's great. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're stopping what we're doing and we're listening for the Lord. That's what I've been doing. Yeah, so let's try again. Okay, you can do this. Okay. Okay. Drew, what is your problem? What? This is taking way too long and it's not even working. If you're not gonna take this seriously, I'm gonna go do it somewhere else. Take what seriously? Me waiting for God to talk to me? Come on, I told you God doesn't speak anymore. (laughs) Is it that God doesn't speak anymore? Or are there just more distractions keeping us from hearing him? Paul said, so I say to you, let us live by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of your sinful nature. So let's we so since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. What in your life is causing you to simply be committed to God instead of surrendering to God? That's what I'm asking you to 
surrender to him this morning. I don't know what it is for each one of you. I could identify with a lot of things in that video. I think we all could if we would be honest. And what I'm asking you today to do is to surrender those things to God so that you live a life walking with the Spirit, living in the Spirit, surrendered wholly to God, not simply being committed so that whatever wants to carry you away and distract you, you yield to that. As we stand and sing in just a minute, I want to ask you to surrender those things to God. I don't know what they are in your life. I I know some of the distractions that I have in my own life. But I'm asking us together, wholly, as a church and as individuals, to surrender all of those things to God so that we can easily hear what it is that he's saying to us and then live a life walking, keeping in step with his spirit.